Hello everyone and welcome back to Summer Lake. Welcome back uh, to another episode of this wonderful Disney inspired project. Yeah, we are back after two weeks of a break uh, where Yosemite Valley just uh, kicked in. And honestly speaking, before we jump too much into the building already, um, here's the little hint that yes, indeed, there is already kind of a little merging going on back to the old new schedule, I should say, where uh, Yosemite Valley has been the main attraction, so to say, on our channel, um, accompanied by some other stuff like the movie habitats and stuff like that. So this will uh, come back towards the autumn and fall season this year, um, and Summer Lake will be moved towards an end, uh, which you will actually um, hear more about in the real-time part at the end of this video. So yes, there will be indeed a real-time part again. Um, and this will be also just to mention, um, only halfway done. Uh, so you've seen from the thumbnail, there is already quite significant building done at the end of today's video. However, the habitat itself is not going to be done uh, because it just was too much time that went already in this again. Like when I was preparing the video, I was like, ah, can you really do this? Can you really split this into two videos? And I just decided to and then I looked into the data and I was like oh my god this is already four hours went into one episode and uh, surely you know there is one thing I just want to tackle uh, while you see some very hopefully relaxing terraforming in the back uh, for this little hill on which we will put a little German castle. I'm going to talk about that a bit more once we are doing the actual uh, castle build but um, I really have to make sure that I be a bit more uh, that I am a bit more efficient when it comes to my stuff now because I don't know I just tend to put so much effort into one single episode which I hope translates into the quality of the videos as well but um, at, at some point it's really hard to bring you guys like two episodes a week with this amount of time going into because again I, I just kind of need to remember myself always that this is not my main job this is just my hobby and you know I've got so many other duties um, in my life that sometimes I feel like I want to finish that because I'm so much into it but it would also be a bit more easy for me to um, sometimes just reduce um, not the amount of, of effort that goes into one build but then just reduce the amount of videos um, hence just, I think that you know I don't want to do this but maybe I have to find like a little bit of a let's say sweet spot in which I can find a bit of a better combination of real-time stuff and then uh, crazy builds like that because again crazy four hours gone into that one and still I feel bad that I don't release the fully built one um, but still there's like good two or three hours that need to be uh, taken um, you know into this project before I can actually safely say that this is a, to a level of detail that I like it to be and actually be like a good habitat but now let's talk about the basic idea about Germany we haven't talked about that this is going to be Germany today um, but the reason why I chose Germany is I had a huge struggle to think about a central European country and I was thinking about France to be honest I was thinking a lot about uh, Italy my biggest issue was that I really had a struggle to find a suitable animal and then there was this news um, coming up on my mobile phone a few days ago where there was like a huge report about wolves coming back to Germany and that was for me like the little kick where I was like hey that could work out just well um, combining the wolf and the bear and I've talked about that already in the past but I think just you know in relation to to the news now and what what is going on in Germany with this um, animal related stuff I think it's a kind of a cool little combination here and the other thing is I also wanted to explore some German architecture again for me because sometimes I feel like I, I know more about architecture of different countries than I know about Germany and you know surely I do know a bit about German uh, architecture in general but I, there, there was just this, this little bit of a feeling that I wanted to move back to the German kind of architectural style to learn a bit more about this and, and just make sure how to do it and so this build over here is kind of a little experiment and I think I just kind of hit a spot here where it works like I'm not entirely sure now I will have to put some more details on to be in entirely happy I guess but um, the the basic notion of this building is to combine some certain 
German building style. So we don't really have only Bavarian style going into this, even though we are just building on an onion roof, which drove me absolutely incredible crazy because I totally did the wrong shape first. I left this in uh, just for the reference um, because I wanted to talk about this and you guys should, if you do onion roofs, there are different types of onion roofs. Onion roofs is not a German thing. Onion roofs are used quite, so, you know, quite often in, in architecture in general, but especially also in Indian and Eastern uh, cultures, you will find these uh, roofs and obviously also Oriental architecture. And this, unfortunately, I don't know why, maybe it, it went back to my time in, in my Arabian stuff I did, but it just kind of uh, was too much Arabian styled first. You will see that in a bit once I'm starting to copy that around. You will see that this is the first iteration of the dome and it just kind of uh, did the onion roof and it just kind of didn't work because, and that is the, the little different thing here, the um, onion roofs that you see in Bavaria most often, they are not like perfectly roundish, while the oriental ones are mostly perfectly roundish or even like a little bit uh, bubbly wobbly I want to say like they're not like a perfect circle but they're just like they're having like almost like a little little stomach kind of thing um, um, just moving out but these roofs um, you see in Bavaria they actually have a little bit of a um, four or six edge ish uh, shape to it um, so it's kind of is it, is it quad quattro qu uh, sextet uh, octa whatever I know I, I mean octa is eight but I just don't know how the wording for it is but you can see that I'm trying to to merge that stuff into a bit more of a um, slimmer shape here that kind of has these little bits of um, uh, little streams in the middle you know that they kind of uh, connect to each other but then there is this like kind of little seam that goes there and this seam is basically where the form is connecting a bit more straight rather than being roundish at this point and this is something you have to keep in mind when you see these onion roofs for example in Bavaria but also in Austria they are also pretty familiar um, with this type of architecture so I was kind of trying to find a sweet spot here and at the end I found a, I found a way where I think it looks good even though there is still some stuff I would love to improve, uh, but maybe I'm going to improve that in a future build because as of now, I did a lot of mistakes building this this little dome spire. Um, I kind of, I, I don't know, it's not as clean as it could be. I mean, at the end of the day, it looks good and I'm quite happy with what it is because we are still in a zoo game and uh, I think it fulfills the little idea about this little castle here. Disney-ish inspired a zoo, but still has the budget to um, kind of accomplish that, but it still only looks decent when you look from a distance and you go a bit closer. There are some mistakes about this build, I gotta have to say that, but I think it's it's rather important to to nail the look first and then at the end i can go into the details and figure out if i can improve some stuff about this but because again there might have been some more ways of doing that a little bit more um seamless and nice um, but you know i am to put it to a, to a rest here i am quite happy with how it turned out in the end uh, the version i have over here and it just works so moving on i wanted to create some more generic wall pieces that we have over here that are not directly connected to bavarian style but just in general some kind of german architectural wall design like kind of medieval uh wall designs that you have like with these little uh, uh kind of stones on top of it and then just having like a bit of a, a watchtower here on this side like nothing in particular also using all this white stone i mean surely you know if you visit these kind of things nowadays they are obviously all weathered and more brown than uh, you know uh, this kind of color um but it's you know it's kind of always the little funny bit about this because also stuff like copper for example you always reference copper with this greenish color now when you look for example also at, uh, at at Paris I think Paris is always a great example of Vienna uh, those two those two cities are the per the perfect example for having those um, turquoise-ish uh, roofs um, with which is so reminiscent of copper and also the copper piece we have in the classical set in here um, is also pretty much really looking at these uh, very I don't know it's like 17th 18th century builds architectural style and i love the fact that I, I i recently had a vr experience which showed for example paris or some other european cities um 
to the time where all the great architecture was built, uh, so 16th, 17th, 18th century, and I was a bit confused, and the same was also happening with Anno 1800, to be honest, um, at the first glance, because obviously the copper roofs, when they were new, are just like shiny, this kind of shiny brownish copper color, and only the co erosion, is it or erosion or corrosion? I don't know, when the weather and stuff is kind of, um, yeah, having an effect on these copper roofs, there's kind of a chemical thing happening and then it creates this greenish color, which we all know over decades because after a while this looks like that. But if the if the buildings are, are new and shiny, they don't have this turquoise-ish color tint from the get-go, they definitely have something else um, in there first, which I always find very interesting because they're so used to this, but, you know, thinking about that at a time it has been looking completely different because how much this is a change you only notice when you see how different that is once you see it in, in kind of a, the original copper color. Anyways, that was just like a little excursion here into my little VR uh, experiment I had there. And then there was a little bit of a cut here because I lost some, some footage um, due to a crash, but that was not on Planet Zoo. I think something happened in the background of my computer. I think it was kind of a combination of my hard drive running full and some other stuff I did in the background and then just kind of everything just froze. Um, so unfortunately I left a little bit. But the good thing about this is I left, uh, I lost the first iteration of that spire roof here, which was pretty shitty, to be honest. Um, and so the second version is kind of working a little better uh, than the first one was. There was a huge mistake in there. And just kind of using um, these metal uh, anchor pieces here as a little, um, as a little kind of a jingle piece, which looks great from from a close-up, but it looks absolutely awful um, from the distance because, well, you don't see it because, again, this is one of the smaller pieces and therefore also has a pretty nitty uh, LOD. For those of you who don't know what that is, the level of detail, that means the further you zoom away, the less detailed a piece becomes simply because that saves performance. And mostly it's not the, not a big deal because you can't figure out that many details from a distance anyways. But this piece in particular is almost a very simple piece already so it is already the let's say lowest LOD anyways when you zoom in because it basically only has eight vertices um, let me just count four blah, six faces and um, just some edges I guess <laughs> um, but no it's just two four eight edges no eight on both sides so that is like 12 edges so it's actually already pretty much a um, low LOD from the get-go and that means zooming out you reach the maximum LOD pretty quickly and that also kind of is the, the thing I guess why those pieces from a distance quite easily um, are already um, not displayed or just they are not displayed anymore from a distance because pretty early on the last LOD kicks in before it completely vanishes and yeah that's kind of a little pity here um, and mostly happening with those small pieces that don't really use many vertices and uh, ge you know ge uh, geometry uh, information I guess that's what I want to say but yeah so now we are getting already into the last little detail bits here uh, putting some stuff in to finish up um, this idea about this building but I will talk you through this a bit more in the real-time part it's definitely not done you know there's some stuff still to be done about this but I think you can really see well now how the different architectural styles start to blend into each other um, I have put this church tower with a very very classical very steep spire in the middle here as like the castle main building I guess and then uh, you know I'm just kind of building a little bit of a more central core build here where there is the pathway leading through which then leads you to a balcony I haven't done yet and it won't be done at the end of the episode but that will be something for the next episode because the balcony is one of the most important focal points here and yes to make people go up here we will also have like a little merchandise shop um, that's also fully embedded in this building so there's quite a bit of, of stuff up here so that makes the people actually go there once the animals are in and also just making sure that this all is coherent um, to the park idea like it's it's not like a you know it's not like sometimes I try to build a zoo that has been created out of a certain area which you know some zoos are created in old royal gardens some zoos are created in old castles whatnot um, but this zoo in particular is inspired by Disney and Disney would build everything from ground up again and is not at all already been there it's all definitely completely artificial and man-made and so it just is kind of a little 
funny idea to incorporate some local influences from the countries that you want to display and in this specific case it's Germany and you would specifically display this kind of architectural style and also making that into a somewhat castle-ish setting and that is what I did over here um, with this little courtyard in the middle and then having all these building pieces around no nothing really you know spectacular it's just I, I mean down to the core of what it is and this is what I wanted to achieve with this build um, not to go over the top I mean I could have done like a cathedral or whatnot um, with 6,000 pieces um, whoever got that joke I love you um, for uh, those of you who don't know the 66k joke make sure to ask me in the comments and then maybe someone else or me will answer this but um, you know a cathedral will always and is always going to have 66,000 pieces okay so that's that's the truth and it will always be that way anyways guys we are getting towards the end of the uh time lapse and i really hope you appreciated it so far now i will give it to my real-time self um talking you through some of uh, the aspects of this habitat and also giving you some more generic info but do let me know in the comments down below how you like today's uh building and let me also know what are your plans for this weekend and also let me know one specific thing and uh have you been planning to go on holidays this year? Has it worked out or was it stopped by this weird situation? And, you know, just in general, because I was planning on doing some holidays soon and I'm just like very unsure. Anyhow, guys, have a good time with my real time part, me. And uh, yeah, just have a good time with them. Bye. Alright guys, here we are in the real-time part and uh, yeah, here we are with this German-ish castle. Now, as I've already explained in the time-lapse uh, voiceover, it was a bit of a struggle. I wanted to mix up some kind of little German elements, um, architectural elements in here to, to make that like the best of... Uh, the, the German architectural world, I guess, um, which is not, not, it's not true because it's definitely not the best of German world, but I didn't want to go fully Bavarian. I didn't want to go fully Neuschwanstein. I didn't want to go fully any other kind of different style. I just want to merge that into one coherent thing still. And I think I'm, I'm quite surprised how well it worked in the end. We have this very typical German church tower here. It's very, it's very common, you know, also how the roof is laid out, like the triangle shape here and and just having the um, very steep um, spire in the middle is just kind of very reminiscent of also Western German uh, churches around the, the you know late 19th early 20th century uh, builds um, nothing crazy you know also having almost have always this kind of color pattern to it sometimes you know varying a little bit of a subtle difference in, in color and whatnot but you know this is and then we do often have the uh, obviously have the uh, onion roof which you would find a bit more to southern Germany Bavaria for example and then obviously a lot of copper roofs um, that you would have seen all through Germany uh, even more into back into history and just kind of collecting this all together in a little castle style because that is something you do see um, quite a lot in Germany especially around the rivers um, Rhine and Donau and also in other places but this is something very reminiscent of Germany also Mosul um, there's a lot of these castles you would find not like you know not like architectural wise but like um, the layout wise very small having this one main building which obviously is sized down significantly what I've done here and then just having some walls around where there is like a bit of an inner court and um, yeah that's that's mostly about it you know that's that's how it looks and then yeah next episode i definitely need your help how you would uh, lay this out but my basic idea here to put stuff in um, is having like a little separation in the middle here and then to the right hand side from what you are seeing right now this could be the uh, bear habitat and then the left hand side could be the wolf pack because now with the upcoming um, improvement to the fur skin color variants that will be absolutely massive and cool so this is also why i decided to go for this country now and also let me just point out i think i will move all the stuff necessities uh, necessities necess bear necessities necessities there we go necessities that's the word you know i just have to remember the song and then it's kind of here uh, just look for the bear necessities okay let's do that i i have i'm I, uh, I'm fearing the copyright strike for bad singing, so uh, this is not gonna happen. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, just putting that under the the mountain here and just having those um, 
those doors into or the gates into the habitat just like hidden in here in the mountain shape i think it could be cool uh and i'm gonna look into this how to make that for the next episode and yeah that is just the content of the next episode now one last thing I have to tell you guys, this is um, the second last habitat of this entire zoo, but don't be sad, uh, there's a good reason for it and also um, there's already an idea how to move forward with um, the basic idea about this project. Now I always said I wanted to keep this a summer project and I think I will succeed for finally, finally I will do it. Um, and. I, uh, yeah, so this area will be reserved for a hopefully, potentially upcoming DLC, but you know, I have high hopes. This little peak of an update about the fur variants is very nice, but it also mostly suggests that Frontier is bringing a bigger update now and they never bring a, well, never is maybe not true, but they mostly bring a free bigger update together with the DLC. Like it's very seldom that they only have a big update. I think they had it once for a Planet Coaster summer update, but they always said that they, this will be like a huge free one. Um, but afterwards it was always like a bigger free one and then alongside there was a DLC. So I'm, I'm quite sure they will do the same right now as well. And if there's anything that could it support even more, then it is definitely the upcoming Gamescom, which is in two weeks time. Yes, I know it's not going to be a physical Gamescom, but it will be a fully digital one with a lot of great companies taking part and especially Frontier is also listed uh, in there as well. So thank you, by the way, for those who commented lately. Now I can finally access the file as well and saw that Frontier is in, indeed uh, listed as one of the uh, key partners in there. So yeah, that's, that's going to be happening. So I will reserve this area for whatever country, continent, whatever is featured in this DLC. Um, I still have my hopes high that this will be something cool. And then we will, um, yeah, do something according to this one. And then we have to finish up the main street. And that is about it for Summer Lake. However, we will definitely continue with this idea in mind of a country related habitat. So maybe I'm going to do more one off projects in the future anyways. I think there is a good reason for why I will do this anyways in the future more often. But you will hear about that when it's time. Um, and also, yeah, just, just talking about one more thing. Okay, so... Well, for those of you who are fine with the episode and you just have seen everything, that is now the end of the episode for you. But now I want to talk a little bit about more personal thing here. And that is um, some criticism I sometimes receive. And in general, I want to reinforce you guys and I want even to make sure I encourage you guys to keep criticizing me in a very polite manner, if that is possible, you know. Always point out when there are things you don't like, always point out when there is stuff that you think could have been done better, which, you know, potentially is in any, uh, in every single episode I do, there is potentially stuff in there I could do better. So just make sure that you have like a constructive way of telling that, like not just I hate this and blah, blah, blah. And just truth to be, truth to be told, lately, it has been absolutely phenomenal. Your feedback was great. There was barely a single soul where I would say, hey, that was maybe not a little bit impolite. You know, if you just completely ignore these uh, accent-related, English-related comments, um, then everything is incredibly positive, really. But there's one thing I keep hearing about my stuff, not only here, but also in some other forums and in some other places. I keep hearing the criticism that my stuff is more random and not really planned out and there's not too much thought about behind it. And sometimes this really hurts me a little bit because you can't really imagine how much thought and how much planning goes into my stuff which you guys never see because that's not part of the video, that's not part of the process, that's not even part of the time lapse, you know, you don't see all the testing, you don't see all the sketching I do with, you know, for those of you who are in my live streams, you know that I sometimes just draw some stuff on the ground with uh, the terrain paint tool just to give me an idea where stuff is. You don't really see how often I pause the game and I just pause the recording and just look at stuff from any angle to make sure it sits exactly in the right position. And it's not a random coincidence that stuff looks good I have on thumbnails or stuff looks good I have in a certain situation. This is always planned, I just wanted to point that out. Sometimes this plan might be total utter bullshit and totally bad and never works out and even if it works out it still looks not that great and that's totally fine and you can always point that out but just let me explain to you that there's always a thought behind this and this is the perfect example. For those of you who have been following this series they will know that I have built this entrance obviously as the very first thing alongside this big tree in the middle. Now for those of you 
who have seen that, they know that this was basically a just a very generic first build without anything else on this map. So how could I have known that this will happen you're looking at right now, you know? That there is something peeking out here, that there is peeking out something here, and there is peeking out something here, which is even matching the background situation with the mountains like it's even in the valley of the background uh, sky map is that a coincidence i think not um and it's actually i have screenshots and then i just kind of paint on it on photoshop you know just just giving me an idea where i could put stuff to make it like a nice little skyline here and how to make sure that for example that tree in the middle is never gonna be um yeah, uh, voted down by other things that steal the show. So you always have this um, logic in here that even this planter gives you a tiny bit of a perspective forcing towards that tree. You see those lines here to the left and to the right and they always move you with your eyes towards that one. So it's not gonna distract you. And these things to the right and to the left, they get their own little area. They are framed by this tower and they're framed by this lower one over here. Same goes for this one. And then you have this pyramid in the middle. So the logic behind this is that I want to have a system um, like very subconsciously for the people going in here that already moving towards the zoo you know you already get an idea hey there is something I want to see there is something I want to see but first of all I'm just gonna go oh, I want to see that tree you know and then just come into the zoo and then there will be the main street here and then it's you up, up to you to make a decision okay so over here the pyramid all of a sudden is blocked but you you will see this castle here, but there's still something to come. So it's not like finished yet, but I have some ideas already where to put stuff. But you go here and you stand here, you look at the tree. You have this vista to the left of this wonderful castle and to the right, the pyramid just barely peeking through. And the idea behind this is you see even something hidden here. You see that sign and you see this entrance over here. So there's everything is kind of hidden for you and you, it's it's there for you to explore and if you just turn around to the right before you can even go to the pyramid in, in case you have decided to go there you are greeted exactly by the entrance of japan you know because as a guest there is no chance for you to just take a shortcut you have to go to the middle and so it's a li little bit of a foreshadowing going on here already before you even move into the zoo you know that is already the situation that you are you are greeted by um so there is like a lot of planning that goes into it it's not it's not random that